This is Peko and I'm in Singapore FinTech Festival day three. Today with me is Mark and uh, Mark is our longtime good friend and we especially invited him here to talk to him and to see uh, what is his thoughts about the Singapore Festival this year. And Mark, please introduce yourself and how do you know about Pundi at first? Sure, glad to. I have to tell you all my story though, Peko. It's really nice to be here at, uh, at Pundi X and of course back in Singapore. Um, full name is Mark Müller Eberstein, and as a German last name gives it away, I live in the United States. So, um, long time in the IT industry, long retired from Microsoft in 2010, uh, mostly doing investments, and wrote a lot of books over the years, always about the impact of technology on business success. I did a lot of research, and uh, when I started researching about blockchain technology originally, I was really excited about the potential of what blockchain technology can unlock the economic potential of people that don't have access to financial instruments. So a lot of uh, people in the, I would say the US and Western Europe, they have bank accounts, they have access to credit, they have ability to transfer money from A to B relatively cheaply, but a lot of people in the world cannot. Um, after I understood the Bitcoin thing a little bit, um, I had a good friend who actually introduced me to the Ethereum Foundation and everything that was built on top of it. And uh, I was very excited the more I learned about it. And uh, I was glad to stay in touch with him. And then one of these days, he said, you remember the Ethereum topic? I said, yes. Well, there are these people from Jakarta, Singapore, Malaysia that are really building something cool and they're really building a payment infrastructure that will allow all the unbanked people plus, of course, businesses have otherwise have trouble getting access to the financial system. And that company, of course, was Punyik. So I met Zach and the founders at that time. I've been always very excited how hard the team was working and uh, really trying to look for the community and for the customers. So I guess uh, the person that you have talked to in the beginning is David, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, David. David and I originally worked together at Microsoft many, many, many years ago when he was the, um, the general counsel. That's a top attorney for Microsoft China. Um, and uh, yeah, we were working together many years ago. This is so cool. <laughs> so uh, why were you uh, joining this um, this year Fin uh, Singapore FinTech Festival? Uh, Mm -hmm. I, I know that you have mm -hmm. come here like regularly mm -hmm. and particularly this year mm -hmm. also make your trip to Asia just for this. So. Yes, I mean, I've always loved to visit uh, Singapore. Every time I come here, I meet really nice people. I learn a lot for the last decades. So I've said, oh, I must have been in kindergarten by then. Um, but um, really enjoy coming to Singapore. While I'm here this time is the, um, I've again, through the books I've written, I've spoken at APEC in 2016 in Peru. So really trying to understand regulators, um, technology leaders from the traditional industries as well, what blockchain technology can do for them. So I've been invited regularly to some of the, uh, the broader events and of course some of the side events that are happening around uh, SFF, the private discussions, uh, some of them are on the record, some of them are off the record, but what's the future going to look like? And it's a fabulous learning opportunity for me and sometimes I can out of offer a little bit of advice as well and a little bit of help. This is great and I know that you're also an ambassador of uh, uh, Singapore FinTech Festival, right? <laughs> yeah, for sure. I, I really have to say if, uh, with all the events I'm going to over the last decades, uh, um, I've been very impressed this year again how many high well, knowledgeable, I would nearly said quality, but how many high knowledge of people are here in Singapore during the week, um, very openly sharing their thoughts, um, driving ideas forward and uh, and really building on top of each other. That's for sure. Indeed, indeed. So uh, for this year particularly, mm -hmm. um, uh, what are the trends that you have seen in during your visit in Singapore FinTech Festival. So one of the things that started really last year visibly was when JP Morgan started the bond swap between Singaporean and Japanese bonds using blockchain technology. But I'm really impressed how far this has come with uh, Project Guardian. The, all the, a lot of the key financial institutions pulling things together, building the infrastructure. I think that was really, really insightful. Um, another really personal highlight was this morning, um, AJ, the new head of the World Bank, uh, was speaking about what he thinks the important things are for our world. And funny enough, 
enough, he ended up one of the last questions he answered was really think about uh, what blockchain can do. And he said, yeah, that's a really, really good technology um, that could, for example, help with uh, identity. Now, here's the interesting story when it comes back to Pundix, and I don't know if you know this, but in 2019, there was a, a invite only CEO event for the largest US banks. AJ at that time was the CEO of MasterCard. <laughs> and uh, we had an Asian innovator there, Zach. So Zach and AJ got to talk for 40 minutes at one point, really one on one, a great conversation about what blockchain can do. And it's interesting to see how this is, and I would say, really drove, uh, I think, maybe even some of the thinking that uh, was shared today.